Hello, my name is Don Lucas. I'm a trombonist and a trombone professor at Boston University and previously at Texas Tech University and previously at Eastern New Mexico University. It's my pleasure to say a few comments about the ITA Frank Smith competition. In the year 1978, relatively a short time ago for me, although younger trombonists will think that dinosaurs were probably running around back then. It was a mixed year for me. I had many ups and downs. But some of the ups involved the fact that that year I not only attended the International Trombone Workshop at George Peabody College, Nashville, Tennessee. That was the name for the International Trombone Festival in those days. And then George Peabody College was bought by Vanderbilt and it was held at Vanderbilt and then later Belmont College, all in Nashville. But I was selected to perform in the Texas Tech University Trombone Choir as one of as the winner that year of the ITA Emory Remington International Trombone Choir competition. Professor Robert Deal, director and my professor, uh, what, what directed the trombone choir. But also that year, I was the winner of the ITA Frank Smith International Tenor Trombone Solo Competition. I had many ups and downs, as I mentioned, on that year. But these were definitely the ups. And I would be remiss if I don't do a shout out to both Hank Romersa, the founder of the International Trombone Workshop, and Tom Everett, founder of the International Trombone Association and the first ITA president. Thank you both for your vision, your hard work, which so many, including myself, have benefited from. I remember Hugo Magliocco, who later served as our 10th ITA president, telephoned me and saying, do you know why I'm calling you? I said, I am hopeful. Then he told me I had won the ITA Frank Smith International Solo Competition. Setting a goal and being super motivated builds a desire within us to get stronger and stronger, and that fuels a greater work ethic. This pattern still applies to me today, to my students and countless musicians, trombonists and musicians worldwide. This was one of the very first successes that helped cement this process for me. Especially during this COVID-19 worldwide pandemic, we need to make a constant effort to own our own motivations, to take responsibility for our own passion and focus, and press in towards that which makes us come alive. Choose to target listening to the music that inspires you. Choose to perform, develop our playing in a new way or a new color. We've all had some successes and disappointments. The successes also help us with the disappointments. I've often heard it said that if baseball players would be well, they would be well envious of us musicians, percentages of success in comparison with their batting averages. They're batting 500, half of the time getting it right. That's a good batting average in baseball. Most days, when we're having a good day, we do better. This year, the chosen piece for the 2021 ITA Frank Smith International Tenor Trombone Solo Competition is Colors by Bert Appermont, published by Beriato Music. The first movement is entitled Yellow, and the second movement entitled Red. So. The competition is from the first measure through measure 233. The Belgium composer Bert Appermont has written many works for wind band, brass band, and orchestra. Colors was finished on December 29, 1998 and written for and features the Belgian trombonist Ben Heimhouts. This is absolutely my personal favorite solo with wind ensemble or symphonic band along with Downtown Diversions, Adam Gorb, and Colloquy by William Goldstein. I had the pleasure of performing this piece rather recently in Rio de Janeiro as part of the Unijio, which translated from Portuguese means University of Rio, International Trombone Festival. There are several very good performances for reference you can find on YouTube of colors. Many trombonists and teachers do not re recommend listening to recordings of a piece for fear that it will influence their own musical interpretations. A few years back, I was chatting with two of the greatest musicians I've ever had the pleasure to work with. One was a pianist and the other was a trombonist. And both of these musicians said during the rehearsal, they just don't want to listen to a recording ever. 
and, and before they work on it. And all I could do was start laughing because in my opinion, it would be literally impossible for both of those musicians to not make it theirs. My idea is I do like to listen to the music and get a, a initial impression of the piece, maybe two or three times. Then I do put the recording away. And as I work with it, I work on my own interpretation. Now, there's a very narrow area for our own interpretation. Most of the things are provided on the music, on the score, the trombone part and the, the piano score with the trombone part. When you're looking at this piece, you need to have a copy of the score. You need to know what's going on in the piano part. And if you do have access to a, a wind ensemble score, that would be even better. I remember taking a, a trombone lesson uh, during the summer with the great Buddy Baker. He taught at University of Northern Colorado. He was as great classically as he was playing jazz. He had played formerly with the Woody Herman Band. And I brought a piece to him to work on and I put the trombone part on the music stand. He said, well, where's the music? And I pointed to it and he goes, well, where's the music? And I started to get the idea he meant something else. And then I realized he meant that I needed to bring the score. I think too often we're tempted just to look at our own trombone part. Look at the score and see what the role of each of us is. Is the trombone always leading? Is the piano always following? Or do we take turns? Are we accompanying? Do we have rhythmic development? What's our role in our trombone part relative to the piano part? There's been many occasions where, when I was younger, the pianist always led. And that now, in the rather more recent years, the pianist is always following. This is actually chamber music. So there's times when the piano takes the lead. Oftentimes I will say very diplomatically to my collaborative pianist, say, what do you think about the phrasing there? And get them to think. And I said, what would you do if you were playing that as a concert pianist on the stage? And then they just, they just, they just go to town, and it's fantastic. And I like the idea to start discussion. Talk with your pianists. Create something that's both of you, not just this is my trombone idea and you will do my idea. I think that if you will listen to the recordings of this, particularly with wind ensemble, you will start to hear timbres, which is also called colors, and you will hear the timbres of what the wind ensemble does. I think that many of those we could represent with trombone and piano if we're aiming for them. A lot of people talk about being musical as if it's just a mystery. And some things will just be personal. We can't quite describe what it is. It just had that certain something. But at its foundation, there should be direction of line going somewhere and coming away somewhere. Like we speak uh, sentences in our languages. Different languages have different directions and syntax. I'm aware of that. And different pieces do as well. The other thing is, there's a style that is usually inherent in the different um, movements and pieces. In this particular piece, the composer has written about different colors. I'd like to talk first about the first movement, yellow. I feel this is very noble and stately. And when the trombone comes in at letter A, it's almost like a flower that opens up. It's, it's not, it just opens up slowly and it just keeps building. In measure two of A, I like to not articulate the B and the A 30 second notes. Do, 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 ba, do, ba, do. Just sort of lightly flip that natural slur. Lean on that non-harmonic tone, that appoggiatura. And the other uh, figures that follow after that are pretty much the same. Two bars before B, when you've played in the middle of the measure on beat three, the F to E, drive through that E, because it leads to the arrival, which is broader sound, bigger sound at measure 23. And it comes back 
in dynamic. You'll notice there's a lot of triplet figures there. Triplet figures have a musical style when we're playing them melodically. Sometimes accompaniment will play them very static, like a metronome would. But da 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 ba po po da 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 da. I like what's said about melodic triplets that they roll or they spin. It's such a beautiful color change in the lead up to letter C. And then it changed this to 12 8. It's more lilting, it's more twirling, swirling, almost dance like. And then it builds and it builds. As we go on, we need to know what our role is, especially at 40. Now, the dynamic in my part, because it's a part with the wind ensemble, I don't actually have the trombone solo part when it was re rearranged for piano, but the part is marked forte in the trombone solo part with the wind band. Whatever it's marked in your part, the pianist must play the melody louder and take the lead. I like using a, li a little bit of a lighter double tongue, maybe da 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 in diminuendo to the high note, right? And then that theme comes back, it says gentle at letter D. Again, we are playing accompaniment. One, two, three, four, five, six bars after D. I like to play the D in flat four and the E in sharp, sharp five. It's a lighter sound and it avoids some slide noise. The next phrase, the next measure in measure 49, the line goes to the middle of the measure. This is beautiful measure, and then we have the original theme that is again at E. We're now into F, and it's building these 16th note triplets. Watch your breath. You're not going to be able to play too loud in, when in the start in measure 67. So manage your air so that the end of it, da -da 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 so you can arrive. There's a gliss as we go into red. Now we have a, a delightful dance at G. I feel that these phrases go to the third bar. When we repeat the gliss in measure 93, I like to play that a little better. Be very careful that you're aware that that's the F above the staff partial. All trombone makers made every trombone really sharp on that partial. So it's like a flat, flat six to a definite flat one on that high C partial. Letter H. These first three notes, they're pickups. I like to say that if we're in a lyrical world, it's something, you know, really relaxed, it's very smooth, we don't use an all-purpose ta. So at H, I would come in with the legato da. Ta da, not ta, but da 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 Lift the eighth note. Da, 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 play more. So that next line goes a little bit more. The phrase I like to use when we're playing legato and lyrical styles is use differences of da. It's just my way of saying that the tongue isn't going to just have an all-purpose ta and stab the note. We will lighten the articulation within the mood. Again, the theme comes back at I. Again, I like to go to that third bar. Those motifs continue in measure 143. It's marked to come down to pianissimo. I would just come down a lot and make a big difference, but don't come down too soft so you're not heard. Um, the markings that I have at K, they have the third bar of K going back to mezzo forte. I believe that's where the line goes, so I personally would, would, would play through that and make a longer line of, again, second more, louder the second time, 
but I would duck in measure 152. Figures build, they build. You're gonna to have to manage your air very carefully to have enough air to be able to come into L. Please don't try to kill those low notes. It takes too much air. Make it sound like a beautiful phrase. Yes, there should be a crescendo, but if there's a choice of not playing quite the dynamic that's written and making a beautiful sound in line, pick the latter, please. When you are playing the next theme, this is uh, 75, 76, 77, 178. Boom. When you're on that high B flat, already start thinking quarter note triplets. So you get on the triplet train. We're now at letter M. I think we should put a diminuendo to the second note. The line goes to the B and comes away to the C. So the arrival is the third bar after M and it comes away. It rounds off the phrase and that note. And then it does it again and it arrives in 190 and then comes away rounding off the phrase. Make long lines, make long lines. Again, this is more of an, a, a lyrical type thing, so use differences of da, please, okay? Take a huge breath before the measure before O, and just don't, well, focus on just keeping that air steady, steady, steady. If your aperture's too big, you'll run out of air, right? So. I like uh, one person's interpretation of this, of doing a little bit more of a legato as you end this, particularly if it's by itself and it sounds like an ending. 130, uh, 232. And just place that pedal B flat in the low range. Keep the corners, keep the corners. Don't let go of your support in the corners. I hope these ideas will help you. It's by my pleasure to present them for you, and you have my best wishes as you go forward uh, with the Frank Smith International Tenor Trombone Solo Competition. <laughs>